Guess who's back, everybody? It's everybody's favorite two crazy ball players, Dimitri Young and Robert Fick. Are you sure about that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to FYI, live on John Lovett's Vodcast Network. Yes, special thanks to John Lovett, special thanks to Mark Short. Mark's our producer, putting this whole thing together for oh, yeah, us. yeah, definitely, man. Uh, Kevin Campbell, Don Todd, putting the studio together. Uh, Finally feels like we've made it to the big leagues here. Yeah, we're back, man. This seat's nice and comfortable. We're not sitting on a, yeah, a stool. We, we got these nice chairs. Uh, special thanks to Ustream. Uh, yeah, 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 thank them. And um, thank our armed forces, of course. I'm a Navy brat. So all of you guys out there defending our country, hey, thank you. TJ Sokol, he uh, he takes care of pretty much everything for us. Uh, yeah, he, he's a he's a tech guy. He's our computer nerd around here. Uh, so what, what, what do we? What, we've been gone for so long. What do we have in store for our listeners today? Well, we're going to talk baseball. You know, it's been a long time since uh, we were out at Dodger Stadium opening day. Okay, uh, okay. Now we we have a special guest here oh, today, man. We got to talk about oh, him. Oh, I first. almost forgot. Uh, you want to you want to introduce? No, him? man, I can't introduce. Well, you gotta uh, introduce. Special thanks to Joe Longo. Uh, we uh, have the uh, exclusive interview today with uh, Lenny Dykstra. Nails. Yeah, nails. Uh, he's everything uh, you thought he was. Uh, you know, one of my idols growing up. Uh, he played the game hard. He played the game right, and he's given us a lot of insight when we were talking earlier. And I definitely want to talk about his bloodlines. And definitely talk about the 86 Mets since I was a Met fan growing yeah, up. Yeah, I want to talk about the gray hair. He's uh, due to be a grandfather coming <laughs> oh, up I here. I know, right? He looks good, though. He's, he's looking good, and uh, what a cool dude, man. We feel uh, real lucky to have him here. Hey, did you share a dip with him? Dude, I think I was going to say he, uh, I think he's the reason I chewed tobacco. <laughs> Watch him spit all that chew in center field on the turf. But uh, it's and, Oh, and let's not forget about our what the f Thick, were you thinking? Yeah, segment. we will save yes. that for later. We'll wait till Lenny gets in here. So yeah, he he he'll have some definite insight on yeah, Lenny. On that. What the thick were you thinking? He's uh, he doesn't hold back. It, it was a lot of fun to speak to him earlier. So uh, well, first and foremost, we had an All Star game coming up, and um, tomorrow. Yes, and we have uh, oh. it, it counts. It counts. Yeah, whoever wins get home field advantage for the World Series. And what I'm going to talk about now is um, this um, Tasmanian devil in um, number 66 with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. I know a lot. Ooh. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of traditionalists out there did not want to see this guy in the All-Star game or in the final ballot. Me, myself, I've talked to a couple of people, and you know what? The game has changed to a point where now the All-Star game means something. This means something. Should have the best players. Yeah, definitely. Know. The guy's hitting over 400, and who cares about the mistakes he's making? He's a rookie. What, a, what a talent, man. Straight, what a talent. Straight from, straight from Cuba, he got a $42 million contract. I don't even think he can count to 42, personally. <laughs> but then he went had a great spring training, hit well over 500, went to double A, hit 337 with eight or nine homers with 37 ribbies, came up to the Dodgers hitting over 400, and you – Talked about the turnaround, not only that he did himself, but the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah, I mean, they were they were in the cellar. Dodgers spent all this money. Uh, wasn't looking too good for our man, Stan Kasten, early on. Uh, the Dodgers pretty much knew what they had in, in Puig from what he did in the spring. He had the best spring anybody ever had. But uh, they uh, for him to come up and, and do what he's done, I mean, it's a special thing he's done. He's brought new life and in, into all those guys. You know, guys are guys are really feeding off him. And yeah, look what Hanley Ramirez. It, it's like he's like a Mike Trout thing, a Bryce Harper thing. These guys are infectious, and and uh, it's it's pretty awesome to and, see what he's doing. And the one negative that they talk about outside of him not really knowing the game, and that comes with experience, but they talk about how he is a little rough around the edges, not recognizing former players like Luis Gonzalez, you know, having it out with Juan yeah. Uribe, those are growing pains when you, we talked about he came from Cuba, 42 million, and he's, yeah. I mean, he's getting success, he's having cameras in his face all the time, people wanting his autograph, you know, people are all over this guy. They don't tell you how to act when you have success, so this is where his teammates are going to have to step up 
and show him the right way. It might be tough love, it might be gentle love, but he needs that in order for him to grow as a player. Yeah, I'd like to see him uh, chill out on some of the antics he's doing out there. Uh, he's a little hardcore with it, but you know, I, I, I'm not going to trash him. This guy brings it every night. He's playing harder than than uh, we've seen in a while. You know, he's he's right up there with Bryce Harper, Mike Trout. This guy's getting after it, and uh, he maybe he could tone it down a little bit. But you know, like you I said, think come in time. the game has changed, and the young guys get away with a little more more these days. So. Uh, you know, I'm a Puig fan, uh, and oh, I love you know, I'm a Dodger fan. I'm pulling for Stan, and and you know, they've turned their season around, and and it's all up to this guy. They got a they got a problem coming up here when, when Mr. Kemp comes off the DL, they uh, yeah, they might have a hundred million dollar player sitting on the bench. So or trade to get some pitching, some much needed pitching. Yeah, the 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 Dodgers they've uh, they've turned it around. I, I'm not sure. I think they're 500. They're two and a half out of first place. So. Uh, I'm happy to see that. The Angels, on the other hand, yeah. man, oh man, uh, you yeah. know, you it's know, like we're big sit. fans of Jared Weaver here. And, yes, you know, he was hurt. He was hurt. Uh, I don't know. He was out for about six weeks. But uh, you know, it hurts when you lose your ace. You you lose your leader like that. He's their stopper. Well, they, so. they really lost that momentum, so to speak, and their offense has started to turn around. But some of the pitching still, yeah, you know, because Albert Pujols. And I like Albert Pujols, and I know a lot of fans are having a hard time. That makes one of us. <laughs> I know. I'm sure you're like, oh, why is this guy getting all this money? He's playing with plantar fasciitis. Yeah, I know. And He's trying. I'm, he's trying hard because most people would have been on the DL. He's not I'm, pulling the Juan Uribe. He's actually, <laughs> he's actually out there playing. So, uh, yeah, you know, Sosha, we were talking earlier, Sosha. Sosh might be on the hot seat, but... Uh, well, he's, on, he's definitely on the hot yeah, seat. Yeah, I hope not. Sosh is a good dude. I'm not going to sit here and bash him either. You know, he's a, he's a lifer. And well, I think Artie Moreno would at least see him see, seek this out to the end of the season and then make a, make a move because that would be unfair because this is a 162-game season where, hey, guys... Guys turn it around the second half of the season. They get rejuvenated. True. They, make, they can make a trade, and that person can be the difference maker. Anything can happen. So I want to see Mike Sosha at least see this year through. And, hey, if he come up short, yeah, you make the decision. Make, and, sure. and I'm sure that if the Dodgers fall on their tails, Don Manley will be out and possibly Mike Sosha come in and become a Dodgers manager. Yeah, I mean, right now, though, the best decision the Dodgers made was to not get rid of Mattingly. He seemed to have held down the fort. You know, they Well, they, they definitely showed some cojones when, when they fought against the uh, Diamondbacks. They got you know. two fights this year, Diamondbacks and Padres. Yeah, and, I mean, these guys are trying to fight. Why are they picking on Zach Green? That'll bring a team together. I know that. I was in Detroit. Uh, we got in a fight with every team. Jeff Weaver decided. I wasn't there at the time. Jeff Weaver decided he would hit the best player on the other team. So we fought the Indians, the White Sox, <laughs> the Royals. I mean, I got my ass kicked more times. So that, uh, and if anybody's seen Jeff Weaver, he's 6'6", 160. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. guy. Is, I know you're watching, Weave. I know. Oh, it's closed circuit television. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's uh, it's it, the Angels. They really need to uh, turn it around. Hopefully, Weave can get them going. You know, uh, Pujols can turn it what around. What about what about Hamilton? Boy, you talking about a hundred million let... dollar deal? He pulling a Jason Worth. You know, you get paid and then you can't hit anymore. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with him. He's uh, I thought he was a freak. You know, he was he was the man, but. You know, change of scenery isn't always good. You know, you well, lose also that. that responsibility of having that kind of contract he, and having to perform. And he he had that comfort zone there in Texas. You know what I mean? That them guys around him. Uh, oh, yeah, they supported him. He had a a nice home base for him to grow as a player. Uh, he he chased the money. Yeah, you know, Texas. They went to the World Series back to back years. They're, those guys know each other. You're not, you know, as a player, you don't have to prove yourself. They're still in first place, aren't they? Uh, uh, no, I the think second? they are behind Oakland. Oakland, yeah. Texas is the uh, number two wild card right now. They're the, yeah, I yeah. believe that's I mean, it. Tampa's the number one wild card. Tampa's number one. Yep, and then you got Detroit and Boston. Boston. Wow. Mr. Lackey, he's uh, really turned his season around. You know, his uh, 
being hurt the past couple of years, getting that big deal in Boston. So uh, he's, I'm a big fan of his. He's a close buddy of mine. So it's nice to, to see what they're doing. And of course, Napoli's over there. And you know, they, uh, Boston seemed to go out and not necessarily spend the most money, but they got the right players, you know. How about that NL, uh, the AL Central with Detroit with, <laughs> with a game and a half lead over Cleveland? Cleveland. There, I yeah. got them down here. We were going to talk about our disappointments and our surprises for, for the first half. Well, and we'll bring that up in our next segment when we bring in um, Mr. Dykstra. Mr. Dykstra. he definitely has a great baseball insight, not only in the professional ranks, but also in the amateur ranks with his son, Luke, 2014 graduate, and is going to be going to We'll see what Lenny has to say about where his son's going. I'm not going to let the cat out yeah, of the bag. It's yeah. not my son. <laughs> but I know yeah. he's a proud papa nonetheless. We'll let, we'll let him spill the beans, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, the, the kid we're talking about, uh, Lenny's son, Luke, he, uh, I saw him. I used to be an agent for a couple of years, and uh, I saw him when he was a freshman playing shortstop at Westlake High School, and you could just tell that this kid, uh, he's going to be something. He has it. Oh, yeah, he's going to be something special. So, uh, yeah, we are looking forward. Uh, you know, this is a big deal for us. Like I was telling Dee earlier, uh, when I was a kid, I looked up to this guy, Lenny Dykstra. He was the kind of ball player I wanted, I wanted to be. You know, he wasn't the biggest guy, but he knew he'd run through a wall for you. And, and you I knew mean, he, he just knew how to play the game the right way. They adopted, he adopted the name Nails. Yeah. And that, Nails for a reason. He was tough as nails. He was diving on that hard turf He's, in, in Philadelphia. He, runs out balls. He's the only player. No, let him tell it. Let him tell it. But he doesn't want to self-promote himself. You know what? You're right. Go ahead. He's the only player to ever lead the league in at bats and walks, which is... Uh, Put your brain together on that one, you folks. You think about that one. That's uh, pretty special. You know, it tells you... I mean, that's unheard of when you think about it because walks don't aren't included with the at-bats as part of plate appearances. For him to get that many at-bats, he also led the league in hits on top of that. So this guy was, I mean, we should have asked what his on-base percentage was because that would have been close to 500. Yep, he's a, he's a special player, man. He's a, a catalyst, you know. He, he set the table and he would take you deep, too, you know. You just yeah, he, had, he had that power, he had that speed. Just don't throw it still, in there. Yeah, we got a bunch of questions for him. Uh, I want to hear about the 86 Mets, the 93 Phillies. So yeah, I'm going to ask him about Pete and Cavillia. Because you remember he was a coach. Yeah, and the, and the Tigers. Yeah. What are you going to ask him? I'm just going to ask him if that, if that was his favorite <laughs> teammate or not. <laughs> I'm going to ask him about Mike Batesel. That was my uh, college coach. Bates is the uh, head coach at Fresno State now. So oh, okay. they're both Garden Grove boys. Well, cool deal, man. It's time for our first break. Already? Yeah, man. Oh, man. All right, see you guys in a few, and you're going to see our third member. Lenny Dykstra when we get back, folks. Thanks. Peace. John Lovitz here. It's time to put laughter back into your life. Check out the John Lovitz Comedy Club, located in the heart of Universal Studios City Walk. For great food, great drinks, and great comedians, go to thejohnlovitzcomedyclub.com. You know, everybody knows how hard it is to start a business, especially me. So that's why I want you to go to LegalZoom.com. They have created a convenient way to get your business off the ground while saving a ton of time and money. I use LegalZoom.com to start the John Lovitz Vodcast Network. Just go to LegalZoom.com right now, and you can create a corporation or an LLC for only $99. All you have to do is just answer some questions online. Now, I have to tell you this. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but it is a step-by-step -step process that was created by a team of top attorneys and experts in technology to provide self-help services at your specific direction. And on LegalZoom.com, you can create a will, a living trust, a name change, as well as DBAs, that's doing business as, trademarks, patents, and more. So launch your dream business right now at LegalZoom.com. And you get an extra discount when you type in my last name, Lovitz, that's L-O-V-I-T-Z, in the referral box at checkout. Go to LegalZoom.com.
We're back, FYI show. Welcome back, Dimitri Young, Robert Fick, and uh, we are uh, so pumped today. We got a exclusive. exclusive. I love that. Exclusive. I love that word. Did I say it right? Exclusive. Makes you feel kind of special. Uh, we have Lenny Dykstra here, aka Nails, a great 12 year career in big leagues. He has a son, Cutter, in the minor leagues, and another son, Luke who is in the amateur ranks, and, well, he's going to have a decision to make pretty soon. So um, before we talk about all that. Four-time All-Star? Three-time. Three-time All-Star. Should have been four, but. But before we talk about all we can, that. We can cut that out. That's let's, right. let's, let's get the pink elephant out in the open. Let's talk about prison. <laughs> that sounds so funny, Slow man. Slow down. <laughs> hey, hey, I mean, all three of us had a brush with the law mm -hmm. quite a bit. It sounds so funny for, for me to say, you know, I was in prison. It's like so unreal, but it was real, you know, and in 12-year career in the major leagues, a two-year career in, in prison. Um, I'll tell you, but, you, know, you know, in a crazy way, in a crazy way, Going to, to prison when I did, not not by, I didn't want to, trust me. It actually kind of made me realize, like, what's important and, and, and where am I at in my life and how did I get here and, and what do I need to do to not come here again and, and what do I need to do as a man and as a father, you know? And, and, and so, in a crazy way, I'm not recommending anybody to go to prison to find your life, okay? <laughs> but for me, I mean, it was rock bottom, you know? I mean, the, the next step from prison is death, if you think about it. I mean, because there's nothing worse you can, you can do to a, to a person than lock them up, take away their freedom. I mean, your freedom, once your freedom's gone. So, so, so prison for me was, was, again, it was... Don't get me wrong, it was so hard, and it was, all you do, you have nothing to do, but, but think, you know? Sure. And, and, and Did you work out? No, I mean, see, what happened for me, because I was kind of a high-profile guy, they had me in, in like, 24-7 lockdown, you know, so it made it even more difficult. I actually read my first book in prison. Wow. Yeah, because, you know, I never That's read. One more than me. Yeah. <laughs> Three more than me. You, you know, I never read when I played baseball. And I didn't read because I thought it would hurt my eyes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it affect my hitting. You know? So, so, so anyway, again, don't get me wrong. It's not. It wasn't an experience I would recommend. But for me, it made me kind of, kind, kind of be honest with myself. You sure. know what I mean? Sure. So, so anyway, that's. I mean, there's a lot of lot more stories in there. It's, it's a crazy scene in there. I mean, they're here with killers in there, you know? Yeah. You know, like what we were talking about earlier, uh, you know, this guy, uh, I looked up to him as, as a ball Same player here. when I was a kid, you I'm know, a Mets fan. wanted to be like you. And then I know, uh, I know everybody wants to see you succeed, dude. Like, That's uh, awesome. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's something that I can almost guarantee everybody's out there hoping that that you turn it around, it seems like you have, you know, and yeah. you'll, you'll well, be back on top. You've been there before, you know what it takes, and now you probably know what it takes to stay there. So. Right, right. Well, you know, you know, this is the first interview I've done. I, I, I want to... I want to walk. I want to walk. Sorry, it's just done. No, no, it's cool. <laughs> no, it's actually cool. I, no, I'm really happy to be here, and, and I mean, I mean, you guys just, we just met, but I can tell that we're, we're going to be friends. But, but, that said, um, I want to walk the talk. You know what I mean? Sure. I, I, wanna, I don't want to come out and tell people, hey, I'm great now, everything's great, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. No, man, I gotta, I'm gotta. i going to walk the talk like I did when I played. You know what I mean? Sure. As a player, as players, you guys know how it works. You can tell, oh, I'm, sure. man, I'm hitting three, I can hit 330. Oh, let's see what you do on, in between the lines. Sure. So that's kind of where I'm at in my life right now. And, and it's been so nice, I'm so grateful to, to be able to reestablish with my family, re, you know, reestablish. I've always been a, you know, I've always had a great family and they've been so supportive and to be able to work with my kids and talk to my son Cutter every night in, in, in you know, he's playing in Washington in the minor leagues there in Potomac, Potomac. 
And then my son, Luke, I went to the cages with him yesterday, and, and tomorrow's a big day for him at USC for, for a area code game. It's all the best place. You hear that, folks? He's going to be attending USC. Well, I don't know if he's going to be attending USC, but oh, they're, they're, they're recruiting him, though. Yeah, they recruit him. I think it'll be between them and, and uh, Cal State Fullerton, those two. How, so, how tall is he? He's 6'2". Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so remember what you said in the green room about – Breeding material. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, my wife, our ex-wife, but you know, you know, we're, we're really getting along well. She's five eight. She's five eight, and, and a great mother and a great person. And, and I've been able to talk with her. And, and yeah, we need to talk off the camera about being able to get along with the ex-wife, especially when it comes to the kids. Yeah, yeah, we do, because I'm doing really well. And, and again, it's not because. I'm somebody special, it's because she is. That's cool. Yeah, and the kids, you know, or they're, they're just, you know, you know, it's just so nice to be able to, to be present for them and to be accountable for them. Yeah, that, you know what I mean? It, it yeah. sounds like that because I was going to ask, those two years away, what did you miss most? My family, you know, and then, like I said, <laughs> I don't want to keep harping on it, but it really was the ultimate wake-up call for me. You know, it's like, how did this fucking happen? You know, how did this happen? And, and it was like, God, you know, just give me one more chance to go to 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 do it to to get out there again. You know. Sure. And so. It's the ego, man. Baseball sometimes. It, it is the ego. Too. That's a great you know, point right there. It is the ego because yeah. that's so. That's exactly right, as, as you guys both know, being all stars. When you're playing baseball at that level and you have fifty thousand people a night and you're making the kind of money we were making, you almost feel bulletproof. Sure. Bulletproof. Invincible. Invincible <laughs> and and and, and 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 like you know, and the ego. And the grandiosity and all the uh, things that come with it. It fucks up your priorities. It, it, it does. It does cloud your, it mm -hmm. clouds your mind big time. It clouds your mind and, and it leads to making bad decisions, you know? And, and so, so for me right now, you know, I'm really one bad decision from going back to where I just came from. And, and that's what, what life's about, decisions, you know? And, and so hopefully people, I can help some people and, and they can see the road I've been on because what I've done and where I've been, you couldn't write this. And I'm not just saying it because it's me. I mean, come on, it's off the fucking map, you know? Yeah. I don't even know how you could, I don't even know how, how, how you, you couldn't write it. You know, you couldn't write this script. And so if I can use this to help people and help, and, 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 and so people don't do what I did and don't, have, don't end up where I ended up, then, you, you know, Nothing would be better for me. There's a rumor going around. Can we uh, can we look forward to seeing a Lenny Dykstra story? Well, well I'm not, and I've told anybody this, but but actually, it's true. You, you know, I, Gil Netter came to me with through Joe Longo, uh -huh. who, who we all know, who's a, about as rock solid as they get. But anyway, and, and told me Gil Netter wanted to do a movie about my life, and so I signed a deal with him while I was in prison. And, and my, my wife signed too. So it's going to be, um, uh, there's going to be a movie made. He, Gil Netter is a whale out there. He, he did uh, Blind Side. This is either two of his latest. Life of Pi. So, you know, I told him I'll do it, but Matt Damon or Mark Wahlberg got, must play me, you know? It's not asking too much, is it? Go with uh, Marky Mark. Yeah. He's on yeah, fire yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Matt, Matt Damon doesn't have that. that you don't. You don't have that dick. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. Oh uh, man. So there will be. A yeah, you know, because the story is so crazy. I mean, I don't say that because I'm proud of it, but it's it's got to be entertainment. I mean, and 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 there's a story here that that's more than entertainment. That's life. You know, and and because of the ups and the peaks and valleys. You know. I mean, I was flying around on my own plane, you know, and, and living about as large as you get. And then I went to, to the cooler, you know, I was in the cooler in the prison for a couple of years, as we talked about. So uh, it's quite a story, you know, and hopefully it'll be, it'll be something that helps people and entertains people as well. Will it be from childhood to 
current or will it be plan days or the the writer the director writer uh, John Hancock who did Blindside um, hasn't decided yet he's not back from Europe when he in fact I'm supposed to sit down with him this week or maybe next week so we haven't kind of went over that stuff yet okay um, when we get back uh, we we'll find out why Lenny went to prison. Uh, we'll get that clarified. And uh, no, we're gonna get into our Q and A about the All Star game uh, and, uh, and yeah, all the baseball related stuff and what the fuck were you thinking? Uh, <laughs> already? <laughs> well, yeah, already. All right. Well, maybe not the what the fuck were you thinking, but we do have some Q and A <laughs> about MLB and and what Lenny likes. Yeah, I got likes. a few questions. I want to find out who his favorite manager was, his favorite player. Oh, we already talked about that. Oh, we did? Yeah, Darren Dalton. Oh, shit. Well, there's other ones, too. I don't know if Pete they... Pete No. Pete, I like Inky. You know, Inky, he's the best 5 o'clock hitter in baseball. <laughs> Without a doubt. I mean, he would just put Can on... Can you believe the Tigers made him a hitting instructor? Oh, is he good for yeah. him? In the yeah. minor leagues? Yeah, he was there when I was rehabbing in Dalton. Okay. Yeah, Inky actually came out and worked for me in my car washes for a while. He had, a, you know, he had a, some problems personally. Uh -huh. and, I helped him out. He was okay. He, 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 I like Inky, you know. He just was allergic to leather. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Le I, I can relate. Legitimately like allergic like, to leather. like somebody I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he used to be my caddy. Yeah. He was my caddy in Washington. I was the defensive were specialist. You? <laughs> That's right. All right, we're having fun. All right, we're going to go to Pink's. We'll be right back. You know, everybody knows how hard it is to start a business, especially me. So that's why I want you to go to LegalZoom.com. They have created a convenient way to get your business off the ground while saving a ton of time and money. I use LegalZoom.com to start the John Lovitz Vodcast Network. Just go to LegalZoom.com right now and you can create a corporation or an LLC for only $99. All you have to do is just answer some questions online. Now, I have to tell you this. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but it is a step-by-step -step process that was created by a team of top attorneys and experts in technology to provide self-help services at your specific direction. And on LegalZoom.com, you can create a will, a living trust, a name change, as well as DBAs, that's doing business as, trademarks, patents, and more. So launch your dream business right now at LegalZoom.com. And you get an extra discount when you type in my last name, Lovitz, that's L-O-V-I-T-Z, in the referral box at checkout. Go to LegalZoom.com. Hi, John Lovitz here. It's time to put laughter back into your life. Check out the John Lovitz Comedy Club, located in the heart of Universal Studios CityWalk, Los Angeles, not Orlando. For tickets, go to the John Lovitz Comedy Club dot com. Welcome back to FYI. This is Dimitri Young and Robert Fick with our exclusive interview with Nails, Lenny Dykstra. Lenny, we have some questions for you about the All Star game coming up and all of us were all stars and uh I love Yasiel Puig. I mean, I love this Tasmanian devil. This dude's an absolute. He doesn't. Know, he's he's a little leaguer playing big league. I wanted him in an All Star game, yeah. based on it counts and and just the pure excitement and the way that the game is going now. Yeah. Well, you you know what he reminds me of? Uh, he reminds me of when Fernando Valenzuela was with the Dodgers. How he he, he created that excitement and the fans. I mean, the fan, Dodger fans, when they get a theme player like that, he's having a theme player. Yeah. And, and so it's kind of got him going again, you know? So, so. No mo mania. No mo, <laughs> yeah, remember? Two I hate, pitches. I hated hitting off that guy. Yeah. I hated hitting off. Split but I'll tell you, the Dodgers, the, the player that, um, that is, is really the, the most dominant player right now for them is, is Hanley Martinez. Uh, Hanley Ramirez, yes, I mean, definitely. And, Henley Ramirez. Yeah, he, he's incredible. We Henley Ramirez. Him. Man, he's got some thunder, you know, and his bat's quick. He's dangerous up there. Sure. You know, so. He definitely has new life. 
Shoot, no. was a couple years back, he was the first pick in fantasy draft. Yeah, so, so Hanley, Ramirez, and, and, and Puig, those two have ignited that club sure. without, you know, without the center fielder. You know what I mean? And, and uh, Yeah, Camp and Crawford. You know, without Camp and up. Crawford just never has put up numbers, you know? You know what I mean? Not since he signed that free agent deal yeah, out of Tampa. You, he, you was, know? he was a perfect I hear he's Tampa. a good guy. I don't know him. But, uh, well, he was off to a good start before he got hurt. You he? Know, he was hitting 300. He was leading the team in home runs. Uh, I played with him in Tampa. I know he's been banged up the past couple of years, but he's the type of guy that he wants to. He wants to be the best. That's he good. wants to win. Yeah. You know, uh, some it's, guys just kind of get bit by the injury bug. Right. He seems to be it's, one of them. It's but part of the game. He's a tough dude. He, you, you actually would like That's the way good. he plays, okay. you know, the way hey, he you, is. You know, the other thing with the Dodgers, a lot of people talked about um, Mattingly going to get fired. Sure. But, you know, in reality, Mattingly's done a good job, and they got a great coaching staff there. Wallach, Tim Wallach. Sure. Well, they do against. have a big league staff. Yeah, yeah. And, and McGuire, great baseball guys. I know the players love them. Yeah, sure. those guys yeah. know how to play the, the, the game. The Dodgers will win the, the division this year. You think the Dodgers are going to win, not Arizona? No, I think the Dodgers will win. Yeah, I think they'll win going away, too. Yeah, I think they, uh, they're they going to get whatever it takes at the deadline here. To well, I mean, they got what it takes. And what are the Dodgers' knees right now? I'd like to see somebody closing out the game. Yeah, probably for, a closer. For real, you know what I mean? Nothing against Jansen, but, you know, if, if there's somebody available out there like Papelbon, you know, that's the kind of guy I would want well, to be. Phil, Philly, you don't know if they're buying or selling yet. Sure. Yeah, I know. They're right there, you know. And, 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 again, I played in Philadelphia, another great, what a great sports town, you know. I mean, I, fortunately for me, I had to play in Philadelphia and New York. You know, so in, in one in New York they they throw uh, coins at you. In Philly they throw batteries at you. I, I got to All play. Right, take the coin. I got to play. <laughs> I got to play in the uh, last game at the vet. It Did was, you? It was in 03, Yeah, I was a brave. And, That's awesome. Yeah. What yeah, a, I love the vet. What a dump, but yeah, yeah, it was cool. No, but great to hit, but great the turf killed hit. me. Yeah. You know, I ended up having a bunch of surgeries from the turf there. You know, it ended up with back surgery and in my career. But uh, I love playing there in front of the fans. Yeah. How, about, how about the Mets fan? Because I was a Met fan growing up. Loved Daryl Strawberry. Loved Doc Gooden. And you should have. Loved Gary Carter. And you should have. Those you know, are great. you and Kevin Mitchell when y'all came up. Yeah, Mitchell. Great guys. Great teammates. Uh, great city. Mookie Wilson. Yeah, great guy. You know, th th that Met team got along so well in 86. You know, the one that, that won it all. Uh, Gary Carter. Jesse Orozco. Yeah, Gary Carter was a, was a great person. A Ray great Knight. man. Ray Knight. You know, and Daryl Strawberry, you know, so when I got called up to the match, Kevin I got... Kevin McReynolds. McReynolds, that was yeah. later, though. That yeah, was that later. Was that was 88 when we lost to the Dodgers in, okay. in, in the playoffs. Game that seven. was when Daryl Strawberry should have won MVP and Kurt Gibson won it that year. Yeah. They all had, like, 44 home runs. And... Right, right. But, but you know, New York and winning in New York and Philadelphia, being able to go to the World Series with both, so, both those teams and those cities is... You, you can't ask for more. I mean, that's like... That's a dream, you know. Sure. That, that's what you dream of as a kid. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still in awe because I'm a Met fan. So yeah, and the fans were off the chart there. They were so awesome. I loved. See, I, I, I love the East Coast fans for the, the way they really stay and are really into the game. You know, it kind of motivates you as a player. Yeah, they're they're there at the beginning of the game and they're <laughs> there to yeah. that last out. And remember, playing on the East Coast, they have a lot of rain delays. Okay, so the fact that they endure that and stay there, they're the real deal. You know, they're the real yeah, deal. Yeah, they don't have anything better to do but watch a baseball game. Exactly. They made plans to watch baseball. They're gonna sit there and watch baseball. Who uh, who was your favorite guy to play for? Well, you know, Davey Johnson was my manager with the Mets and. I didn't get along with him as well as I, I, I would have liked because he didn't play me every day. He platooned, he platooned me, you know. He platooned me. And, it, you know, it just as a player, you know, to be an everyday player is what you have to do to, 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 to make money and, and to, to, to last in the big leagues. So when he traded me to Philadelphia, I got a chance to play every day there. And so, you know, my favorite manager is probably Jim Fergosi. You know, he's a player's manager, great dude, hardcore dude, you know, baseball guy, old school baseball guy. And I grew up watching him, too, when he played for the Angels. 
Yeah, so you're a big baseball fan. You ever thought about um, – I know you're working with your son, Luke, but you ever thought about getting back into the game? I, I, I have, you know. I have, and, and I am going to do something baseball-related because that's my business, you know. That's what I know how to do. That's what I, that's what I know best. I mean, baseball is, is, is what I've done my whole life. So that's where I can, I think, help people the most too. Yeah, I mean, shoot, man. We were talking earlier about hitting and stuff, and and D was talking about how how guys seem to talk about mechanics, you know, the mechanics of the swing. But you know, you you have something to give to the kids. You know, the way you played the game, the way you stepped in the box, and you know, it was personal. It was a war you against the pitcher. It, it was, you but know. but but the other thing was is. You know, players that played with me know I, I, I know how to I knew how to play the game. I played the game right, meaning not just hard because that's sure. how I, I mean you're only out there two and a half hours. If you can't play hard for two and a half hours, get the hell out of there. Exactly. I mean, you know, I don't can't care. run out of ball. Care how over you are. Exactly. Whatever. <laughs> green, right. Do whatever go. the fuck you uh -huh. got to do. That said, that said, there's a lot more to baseball than people understand. Like hitting, hitting is. It's so much mental that we've talked. We talked yeah. about this, and it's so much having an idea, having a game plan before you get in the box and, and what you want to do. Uh, I mean, there, there's so much more to hitting and than, than people know, and, and they make it a lot harder on themselves because they don't know or prepare to, to put themselves in a position to succeed by by having a game plan that's appropriate to, to hit in the big leagues, you know, or hit anywhere. Did you rely heavily on like scouting reports? Like, there wasn't much video. I yeah, there was. Old, video, everything was in video. You did? Yeah, I played in the you know I played the eighties with the Mets, nineties with the Phillies, and. Um, but nowadays I, I, you can go look at your bat right away, get on the computer yeah. with the mouse and pull that thing right. Yeah, out. that's what I did with the with uh, with, with the Phillies more, not the Mets. And the reason why I did that, I wanted to watch how a pitcher would pitch me, how he worked me the last time. Right. Sure. You know what I mean? And, and so, video is a huge part of the game now. I mean, that's why the players in baseball, that's why it. baseball, Definitely. for a hitter and also for a hitter, baseball, it's harder and harder for a hitter because pitchers have such great control. And, and you know, pitchers now can throw breaking balls when they're behind in the count. Sure. Whereas before, you used to get, it, if, it was, if you were ahead in the count, 1-0, 2-0, and you you're getting a fastball. But now... They'll throw a change up or a breaking ball, as we know, because why? Why? Because hitting is all about timing. Mm -hmm. So if a pitcher can deceive you or, or trick you, you know, and that's how it works. Uh, so, so anyway, uh, that's a whole different issue we can talk about. Yeah, we can talk about that forever. All <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I know you're opening some baseball schools too. Yeah, I have my Demi Hook Switch Hitting University. It's awesome. And then have California Big League Academy I actually have a camp tomorrow. That's awesome. And. Um, the one thing I want to ask you, and I know you're a very humble person about your stats, but can you tell us that one particular stat that possibly no one's going to ever attain? You know, it was crazy because in 93 I was on a mission, you know, and, and, and I played in 161 games just because we clinched and I gave me the, Pergosi gave me the day off. But, you know, the game of baseball is all about, I'm, I'm in the Billy Bean school, too. You know, Billy Bean, the, the Oakland general manager, mm -hmm. who was my roommate for a couple years. Oh, wow. Yeah, who was my roommate for a couple years. Me and him were good friends. Yeah, with the Mets. Yeah, we were good friends. Um, y you know, I mean, I mean, the stats, I mean, I'll, I'll go out and say it. You know I, what, I, can we... Take a break and bring that back up. Yeah, because that's kind of a crazy stat. I would definitely like to hear about that. We will be right back on FYI. You know, everybody knows how hard it is to start a business, especially me. So that's why I want you to go to LegalZoom.com. They have created a convenient way to get your business off the ground while saving a ton of time and money. I use LegalZoom.com to start the John Lovitz Vodcast Network. Just go to LegalZoom.com right now and you can create a corporation or an LLC for only $99. All you have to do is just answer some questions online. Now I have to tell you this, LegalZoom is not a law firm, but it is a step-by-step -step process that was created by a team of top attorneys and experts in technology to provide self-help services 
at your specific direction. And on LegalZoom.com, you can create a will, a living trust, a name change, as well as DBAs, that's doing business as, trademarks, patents, and more. So launch your dream business right now at LegalZoom.com. And you get an extra discount when you type in my last name, Lovitz, that's L-O-V-I-T-Z, in the referral box at checkout. Go to LegalZoom.com. John Lovitz here. It's time to put laughter back into your life. Check out the John Lovitz Comedy Club, located in the heart of Universal Studios City Walk. For great food, great drinks, and great comedians, go to the John Lovitz Comedy Club.com. Welcome back to the FYI show. Uh, Robert Fick here with my partner in crime, uh, Dimitri Young. And we uh, have our exclusive. You know, Are you still in awe of this guy? I am. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> I can't help it. We have Lenny Dykstra here. Before we went to the break, we talked about uh, we had talked about it before, but we want to uh, embarrass Lenny a little bit, if you call it that. Lenny doesn't like to like to talk about himself too much, but uh, his amazing stat. Uh, I'll let you let you tell it. Well, you know when I played, um, I led the league in in a couple categories that are hard to lead the league in. One of them is, is at bats, which isn't hard to lead, lead the league in, but then to lead the league in walks as well is a crazy stat because a walk isn't an at bat, okay? So for me to, for me to be able to do that, at, at the time, no one had ever done that in, all, in the history of Major League Baseball. That being said, they've been playing baseball for hundreds of years. So I led the league in, in plate appearances as well, obviously. And, you know, when they told me I was passing Babe Ruth, it was like, wow. <laughs> so they told me, you know what I mean? So they told me I no led all... your head got so big, <laughs> your damn ego. Jeez. Same category Babe, as Babe. Babe. Babe Ruth. Crazy and past <laughs> Babe Ruth, you know? So, so, like I said, I was on a mission that year with the team. And, and you know, I, I, I don't know if anybody's ever done it, as, uh, you know, since I've done it. But, but uh, no one never done it before in the history of baseball, which is a crazy stat. I don't know. Do we have a statistician here that can look that up? I don't think so. I don't think that can. Because it's uh, almost impossible. I didn't think it could happen. Because yeah. if you lead the league in at bats, sure. I mean, remember, it's not like I finished top 10 in the league. To lead the league in at bats, okay, is one thing. But then to lead the league in walks. Do you remember how many ABs you had that year? Yeah, I, I had 670. 670, and I had 120 walks. Uh, yeah, 120 walks. <laughs> how many, how many walks, runs? 145 runs. Wow. Yeah, 145 runs. Were you in the cold tub after each game? No, no. I uh, uh, actually got uh, the, the doctor used to give me pain pain pills. You know, that's a whole different yeah. story, though. We'll have to do it on another segment. You know I, mean? <laughs> I think I know that. You still got his number? <laughs> oh. No, no, no more. Oh, man. Well, right now it's time for our favorite segment of the show. What the fuck were you thinking? Oh, oh. Robert, well, who's the uh, culprit? It, it's, uh, it has to do with basketball. You guys all know I'm a big Laker fan. Uh, very disappointing season this year, but uh, very happy to have lost Dwight Howard. Uh, I think, uh, I think uh, what a fraud this guy was. If you watch the Lakers every day, this guy didn't show up to play every day. And I'm a big Kobe Bryant guy, and, and uh, you, you just can't teach that killer instinct that Kobe has, LeBron has, obviously Michael Jordan. Um, well, maybe he'll get it now with the uh, Rockets. The guy left, uh, you know, he left $30 million out there. If he signed back with the Lakers, he, he would have made an extra guaranteed $30 million. And uh, I just, uh, what the fuck, what the fuck was this yeah, guy see, thinking? Well, well, it's not about what he was thinking. I, I think it, it's he's more about, that good. well, the fans of, 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 of the Lakers are so happy right now because he's not, he, he just, he might be good, but he didn't play to his potential and didn't look like he was trying out there. You know what I mean? He didn't want to be out there. Yeah, so, I mean, for the Lakers, it's a good thing. I mean, 
But did you see all the billboards and shit they put all over? You know, stay D12, all that shit. They can replace that really easily. Well, they yeah. took them down. They took them down. But yeah, they can, they can find another big guy, man in the draft. Uh, uh, I've seen some frauds before, and this guy, uh, I'm a Laker fan, man. That, that's my team. So you got to be happy now. I, I mean, am you should happy. be happy. Yeah, you should but, uh, be. Hey, good riddance. I'm pissed good that, riddance. We, that we lost Bynum, you know? Yeah. We should still have Isn't Bynum. he in Cleveland now? He, he signed with Cleveland. Yeah, he never even played a game for the, the 76ers. Hey, what did he sign, a two-year on 12 million? Do you like basketball? You, you know, a little bit, you know. Yeah. I, I like, you know, a little bit, but... Uh, you know, baseball and football and tennis and golf. I like all sports. Yeah, I like basketball. Yeah. This wasn't something that, you know, I was able to do being being a small guy, you know. I mean, I wasn't even supposed to play in the big leagues. You know what I mean? I mean, being 5'9 and a little guy, that's why I was drafted very late in high school. Out of high, I got drafted out of high school and turned pro. You know, I was a 12th round draft pick. But I hit 550 in high school. Wow. You know, and they, it's, but because they thought I was too small, I... I was an underdog. They thought I wouldn't make it to the big leagues. And uh, so I did everything in my power to prove them wrong. And, and, and uh, fortunately for me, you know, it took some breaks, but uh, by, I guess by the grace of God, you know. Who do you root for now as a fan? Which, which team do you root for? Is it just... You know, I find myself watching the Dodgers, and yeah. I like the Dodgers, you know. But you gotta give uh, you gotta give Boston some credit, and, and more importantly, but the the team I really give credit to, and again, not because Billy Bean is my is is was my roommate and my friend, but look what Oakland's done. Yeah. I mean, unbelievable. No one even really knows there anyone on their team. Bob Melvin, we had Bob Melvin, the manager yeah. on our show. Did he's, you? He's, one of our favorite he's gonna guys. be the manager of the year again. He'll again. be the manager of the year again. I mean, un awesome. But <laughs> it all starts with Billy Bean, you know, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah, whoever owned that team gave him free reign to do whatever, and he Look what he's done. I mean, anyway. The next thing for him is to get a championship to really solidify. A World the Series. Favorite. Yeah. They've knocked on the door, but they haven't won one. So uh, he will. He's a winner, obviously. He's a scouting man. They keep getting the right guys, bringing the right guys in over there that know how to play the they game. They bring winning players in, yeah. players that know how to play the game know how to get runners over, know how to take pitches when they should take pitches. And they're trading away talent and getting yeah, because young, of their good young talent Well, back. because of the money, you know, he's on a budget. He doesn't, have, he doesn't have the money like these other clubs. And for him to win without that is crazy. Especially against th that division with the Angels, the Rangers. Yeah. You know, the I Angels, know, the, the, the Angels <laughs> have just completely dropped the ball. I'm, I'm really disappointed with, with them, you know. And the manager, Mike Sosha, is a great guy. Great yeah. guy, you know, uh, but but you know, hopefully they can turn it around. The center fielder, half, the know? center fielder is is it seems like he's just swinging at everything, you know. Trout. Yeah. No, 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 you're talking about excuse Hamilton. me, Hamilton. Oh, yeah, no, Trout's oh, playing oh. center. No, you're right though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hamilton's playing uh, wherever he's yeah wherever he's Maybe playing. Maybe he's feeling the pressure of the contract. Yeah, I don't know what kind of pressure there is. I mean, that's like... I don't know. I'll be happy to yeah, go out no there kidding. and play, right? <laughs> you know, and Pujols, not is, care in the Pujols world. is not playing the way he's capable of playing. And well, to his excuse, he's playing with uh, plantar fasciitis, and we all know how bad that is to be on What is foot. it? I never even heard of it. It messes with the arch in your foot where it causes tremendous pain. Oh, so really? you can't really balance yourself on it. Yeah. So, so he's doing something that... Pretty much every other player would have gone on a disabled list for it. Really? I thought it was a sore vagina. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <she would. laughs> uh, shit. I'm not an Albert Pujols fan. So I am. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But, but he's an Alex Rodriguez fan. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know about that. But, you know, the, the thing about it is, is, is one of the other things the fans probably want to understand is why these guys have these great years, get this big money, and don't aren't able to perform as well. And as we know, as players, your body starts breaking down. So, so the way the game is works economically, the players have to put in you know seven years, six, seven years to, to become a free agent. And so, as you know, the more games they play, we played, the, the harder it is on your body. So sure. it's 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 kind of weird how it works. You kind of earn your money, okay, by by playing for the years that you played. And then after you get the big contract, you're on the back side of your career. True. Right? Yeah. That, you know, I never looked at it like that, but that is true. You, it's how it going, works. You're going into year 30, 31, 32, exactly. and you sign a big deal. But, but, you know, and as players, 
we we know we're I'm happy for the guys to get the big contracts. I mean, it's hard right. work. It's a I mean, all the games we played as kids, all the games we played, you know, in the minor leagues, all the games that we played up and down, you know, it's, I mean, if you think about it, in Major League Baseball, there's 30, I don't know, 30 teams, right? Yes. Okay, so, so usually coming up, you play one position or whatever. Not like you guys. You guys are multi-talented. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> no, multi-talented. You want to call it that. <laughs> but but so so let's say you play shortstop for the Yankees, you know, and, and when, when Jeter was there, he's hurt right now. You know, let's say you, so, so you have to take someone's job, and there's only 30 jobs in the world to be a shortstop, and now you got players coming from, from China, from Japan, from Puerto Rico, from Cuba. Dominican Republic, Venezuela, Cuba, the whole world. So it's really a crazy and, and amazing uh, stat to get to the big leagues. And then to stay to the big leagues even harder. Yes. What's the average two years, something small I don't know. Like I, think two, I think closer to four years once you get there. You know, I, I'm not. I'm not sure though, but it's it's, it's yeah. a it's anybody it's can, anybody can make it to the big leagues. It's staying in yeah. the big establishing leagues, establishing yourself. It's it's true, man. Everybody's out to get you. Yeah, not anybody can make it in the big leagues, but I know what you mean. It's staying in the big leagues is hard. Yep. You know, they used to call it what was it, a cup of coffee. Yep. Yeah, a cup of coffee. I think they still call it that. Yeah, That's they, right. They still do, and they still call the rookies rooks. I think. Who was uh? <clears throat> Who was somebody, somebody you idolized when you were a kid growing up? You know how we looked up to you? You were always one of my first picks on my Wolf. Yeah, and you know, so. the, the player. You were great in RBI baseball, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Stratomatic, I used to play. Stratomatic. That was before you guys. But, but you know who was uh, the idol for me that I looked up to? And it's not a guy that really fits with my personality as a player. Rod Carew. And, and in fact, about that. in fact, Rod Carew, but I, he was such a great hitter, you know. And talk about he swung at strikes. That's hit, hitting, swinging at strikes. What a cool dude. Well, he checked, so, so check this out. So I, I used to ride my bike to Angel Stadium every night, you know. I lived, I grew up in Garden Grove and right Anaheim, next city over. So one night after a game, I want to go in the clubhouse and meet Rod Carew. I really, I can't take it anymore. So I tried to. You know, like walk down in the runway to meet him, so I get arrested by the stadium police. <laughs> and I mean, and you know, it was crazy. I was so scared, and my aunt ended up writing a letter to Rod Carew saying that I wanted to sneak down. You know what happened I, to try to meet him. And so I'm home one night with my uh, with my mom and dad watching TV with them. I used to lay on the floor, and um, the phone rings. Okay, and my mom answers and says, yes, she says, Lenny, you got a phone call. So I said, okay. So I, so I pick up, I say, hello? He says, Lenny, this is Rod Carew. <laughs> I, I said, I didn't know what to do. I, I said, I wanted to ask him a bunch of questions about hitting or what should I say to him? So I'll never forget that. And what I did with Rod Carew later when I had my car washes, I had grand openings, I brought him to my grand openings. So it was really cool to go full circle on that. That's cool. He's an awesome guy. Awesome. Awesome. He's just hitting schools too. Yeah, he, he, yeah he's, really. he still does, I think, right? Except he knows what he's yeah. talking about. <laughs> All right, and on that note, we're going to end this show. Thank you, Lenny, for the exclusive interview. Yes. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome back anytime. Uh, Robert, yeah. Fick you. And for you people out there listening, love you. And uh, next week's guest will be uh, Jose Canseco. That'll be Robert's guest. <laughs>